Hedy Lamar had it all. Once named the most beautiful woman in the world, Lamar starred in over 30 Hollywood movies. But her overwhelming beauty and film career were just two aspects of who she was. This sexy screen goddess was also incredibly intelligent, creative, curious, and fearless. While most women of her day were homemakers, Hetty spent her time as an actress by day and a groundbreaking inventor by night. She developed frequency hopping spread spectrum communication in the hopes of helping America prevail over Germany in World War II. This communication system ultimately formed the basis for today's Wi-Fi, GPS, and Bluetooth systems. She also designed a new airplane wing shape, thus making planes more aerodynamic. Sadly, the world was not ready for Hedy Lamar. People loved her face and watching her on the big screen, but they simply could not acknowledge her intellect. It was not until 1997, over 50 years from when Hetty invented frequency hopping, that her inventive abilities were finally recognized. Hetty Lamar is an inspiration to all people to follow your passions, talents, and interests, even if the world can't see what you have to offer. I painted a portrait of Lamar because her story has always inspired me. I also had the great pleasure of talking to Hetty Lamar's daughter, Denise Loder DeLuca. Denise, an artist herself, offers an intimate look into her relationship with her fascinating and talented mother. I hope you enjoy our conversation as much as I enjoyed having it. What was it like growing up with Hetty Lamar? That's a big question. Uh, it was fabulous and it was hard. So I would say, you know, lots of highs and lots some lows too. Well, before we go further, did you see Bombshell by any chance? I did. Okay, so you know that there's a lot there. Yes. And that being said, what would you say in your memory was the greatest high and what would you say is one of the greatest lows that you remember? Well, the greatest high was that she was probably the most lovely human being on earth and having a mother, you know, like that, sing you lullabies and kiss you and, you know, just be there was just like mesmerizing. I, maybe all children think that of their mothers, but maybe it was, you know, even more. I don't know. It was just, you know, like heaven. And then we were shipped off to boarding schools because she was working, and then so we never could see her except visiting days or vacations. So that was really hard, you know, at, at her most wonderful. We were shipped off uh, into boarding schools, which coming from Europe wasn't that unusual for people to do with their kids, uh, you know, upper class people in Europe. It was kind of standard. So I'm sure she thought it was okay, but we were pretty young and um, really sad to be away from her. So she was great, and unfortunately, while she worked, she, we were in boarding schools, I think even from preschool age. And all the way through graduating high school? In boarding school? Oh, no, no, no. Then we were home. As she got older, she was not getting the work, and she would marry, and we would move to Acapulco and divorce him, and then marry, and we would move to Houston, Texas, and divorce him, and we would always come back to Beverly Hills and to the Beverly Hills Hotel. That was like the only stable, kind of like home, which is fabulous, but kind of sad when you think about it. That was, I mean, that place seems like home to me. I just did a really cool painting of it. If you look down at the bottom of the page that says places, I just love that place because it was kind of, I knew it, and it was like coming back home. But so after, you know, once we were in regular school, we were with her even though it was all over the place. And then when we were in high school, we were shipped off. I I shouldn't say shipped off. We were lucky enough to go to a boarding school in Massachusetts. So we were there, and she was in in L.A. So 
but then it was kind of a relief to get away. But it was always disruptive, you know. Different schools, yeah. different cities, you know. So um, sure. the worst part, I told you that the best part was she was the most charming, lovely, loving person. Creative, I mean, singing, painting, beautiful, everything was just, you know, perfection to me. And then when she went through her downfall because of addiction to drugs, which the studio got her started on, um, it was just um, really unstable. So that was difficult. So we were shipped off, and we didn't like that, but when we came home, it was so unstable. It was like almost a, is is it respite? More structured there and a little safer, so that's when it was harder. As we got older, it just got harder. I mean, actually, Alex um, Dean did a great job of kind of portraying that pattern, that, you know, that trip that she was following, you know, in her life, <laughs> she did a really good job. It's funny, I, I was, you know, ashamed of all that, trying to hide all that. And she did such a wonderful job of explaining it, you know, it really helped me come to terms with it all. Yeah. That, and have, that's you know, nice. I always had empathy, but still it was hard on a kid, you know. What do you think most defined your mother? What trait most defined her in your mind? To me or to the world? To you. I'd have to say beautiful and more inside than out because everything cultural, everything in nature, everything that was beautiful, she opened my eyes to, like ballet, music, painting, nature. So when I say beautiful, I mean what was inside. That's a trait. And super creative and super ahead of her time. And those are three great things. Yeah, so lovely. I mean, my friends' mothers had aprons on and were cooking for their husbands. They didn't even work, and my mother was telling guys what to do. So <laughs> it was really, really <laughs> ahead of her time. I, it embarrassed me then because you want to be like everybody else, but we certainly weren't. Well, when you were growing up, did you hear many stories about your grandparents? No. Well, my granny was in L.A. I think Mom helped her come to L.A. uh, before the war, in the beginning of World War II. So, uh, no, we didn't hear stories. The only story was how much she loved her dad and I heard that a lot, and I, you know, no, not many stories. What about stories about Austria? She loved Austria so much, I can't even tell you. She talked about Austria all the time, <laughs> all the time. She loved it. She sang Austrian songs. She, um, everything about it, I maybe I would think a lot of people that leave their homeland, but I don't, maybe it's just because, You know, maybe everybody is that homesick for their homeland, but she definitely was. And yet she never moved back there. Probably didn't know anybody there after a while, you know. And then when her life became a little unstable, it would have been too hard to relocate. But she adored everything about it, the music. I mean, if they had a concert on PBS from Vienna, she would call and go, you know. The Vienna Symphony is on, or, you know, anything (laughs) about it. She just loved it. I have read and um, watched about her Jewish background, and I've heard you speaking about how it was something that wasn't mentioned, um, really. But once you, did you ever talk to your mother about your Jewish heritage and um, what it meant to her? Okay, up until the very end, because people started hearing about this invention. The news started, you know, getting out there. And professors would call me and mention it or send me an article on it or something. And I would call her and say, Mom, 
everybody says we were Jewish. Were we Jewish? And she would say, this is in the movie, don't be ridiculous. She'd say no. She totally denied it. And I thought, well, who are these people telling her what she is when she's telling me herself? She wasn't. And it never came up. We went to church with our friends in in Texas because everybody went to church there. And um, no, even in Beverly Hills when everybody was Jewish, it she, I don't know if she was raised not Jewish or if she's just in just was denying it because of the war. I have no idea, but I never believed it until Alex Dean showed me papers of like my uh, her father's death certificate, and it said whatever the word is Jewish on the bottom. It was the first time I ever saw proof, and I have no idea why mom said we weren't. Let's see, I probably was in my, let me think when she died, you know, my late 50s before I found out. No, actually, I didn't find out till I was in my 70s. Okay, well, let me ask you one more question about your grandfather, um, Hattie's father. Do you, was it true, or did you ever talk to her about the fact that from an early age, he had recognized and encouraged her interest in how things work and in science and math and um, those types of things? Did you ever have conversation about that? No, none. No, none. none. I, apparently, my brother did because he talks about it in the movie, in the documentary. Well, you, you know. and your mother never, yeah. No, I think we talked about art and ballet and movies and you know outfits and yeah, boyfriends painting a lot. When your mom talked to you about painting, um, what were what were some of the things that she revealed to you? What were some of the things that she loved about art or artist or painting herself? What What did you find out? Oh, I think she just encouraged everything I did, even my little paintings from as early as ninth grade. She would frame everything I'd bring home from art class. And uh, she just was like, it's a shame she never saw my paintings I didn't start painting till after she died because I retired and was able to paint again, but she never saw any of my real work, just my, you know, when I was really young. But she just was just, loved it. She was just so free. And her paintings are pretty abstract, and mine are really realistic. So, I don't know, she just was, just loved all the arts. And to me, like, living with mom, instead of being a Hollywood party, it would be the creative people in the industry standing around the piano in our living room with somebody playing and singing songs that everybody knew and singing along. So it was always creative, always wow. creative. So it just flowed for me. And then when she painted, oh, God, she would, like, paint on a cou- on a beautiful couch and not even something. It was pretty wild. She would... She didn't have, like, an easel or anything. She would just paint wherever. That's funny. (laughs) What about the aspect of her that um, was such a fighter and a trailblazer that, you know, we've come to find out about her today? Do you think that was just her natural personality? Or do you think because she had been through so many trials and tribulations in life that she became a strong person? Was it something she was born with, or what do you think? Uh, Probably a little of both. I think being in the position in the industry pushed her into being, having to be stronger just to survive as as a young woman in Hollywood. She probably just, she wouldn't put up with it. And, um... I don't think she wanted to be pushed that hard, but, you know, I think her core was um, strong. I mm-hmm. mean, she definitely had an opinion. She was, she. was There's no way she could have been a little subservient housewife. And I think that's part of the problem with the marriages, because that's what you were supposed to be back then. And <clears throat> um, 
I I think she was probably born with a good constitution, but I think I think she was probably uh, you know a, a good, stable, sturdy, strong-minded young woman, and then as things started crumbling and lawsuits and everything, she was you know pushed into way more than she wanted. Right. But, right. You know, and then also with her invention and not being acknowledged, just being told to, you know, just stay in your place and sell war bonds. And I don't know. It just seems like she, along with many women in that era, were knocked down quite a bit. Well, did she talk about the inventions not being acknowledged um, throughout her life? Did she carry a lot of angst about that? No. I barely even no. knew that it, that it existed. She had mentioned to me, like she invented some anti-rocket missile device, and I was like, "All right, mom, like what?" You know. But, <laughs> I mean, I didn't, even, I didn't even know what she was talking about, so we literally didn't even talk about it. And it's not that it, she didn't want to talk about it; just you know, in your day-to-day life, it was like, you know, how are you getting home from, you know, this or you know, pack your bags for that. It was just day-to-day things. Uh, sure. I think I left younger than my brother because things were so unstable. I married young. Well, we were in boarding school, and then I married, then college, and then marriage. So I wasn't around a lot more than my brother. So he, I think, had more conversations that came up more in later years when I was already married and had my own kid and I was married to a baseball player so we were never we were traveling all the time so it wasn't until people started sending me think information about it and right. like I said in the movie um I said mom you really did invent this and she goes I told you I did and I just was like oh my <laughs> god this is real and it's big it was surprised me, but she wasn't technical. She was. Um, mm-hmm. she, she would think of concepts, you know, ideas, not not how it worked. But she would have the idea in her mind, and then somebody like George Antile would figure out how to implement it into actual working. Yeah, and which I thought was fascinating. Yeah. A musician and an actress come up with something like that. <laughs> right. Such a story. It is. It's almost like a Hollywood story itself, so it's hard to believe it was real, but it was. <laughs> it's hard for me to believe. and Like, yeah. I just didn't even take it seriously until, like I said, when I was older and people, like, um, these scientists were contacting me and starting to, you know, like send me an article. What is that? Inventors Magazine or something? Things like that. But most of it actually came out after she after she died. So it's just wow. crazy that young people now know who she is and for not because of the movies. It's just such a different scenario than when she was alive. Right. It's like a whole second person. <laughs> you know. Because she's really not known for the movies anymore. She's known for technology. And when the internet came about, it bugged her so bad. She, She's like, oh, what is all that biddly bop dot? You know, she just, it, it, she had no patience for technology when all, then everything started coming out on the internet. That's and so just, funny. <laughs> yeah. Little did she know she had, you know, something to do with it. (laughs) Yeah. Wow. Well, as she grew older in your conversations about Hollywood, if you had any, did she talk about how roles for women were evolving or how the industry had evolved from when she was in it or, or, or any of that? Did you have conversation? We didn't have conversations about anything but our lives, you know, like mm-hmm. how's my daughter and 
you know, did you get everything unpacked or whatever, just day-to-day <laughs> life, mother-daughter right. stuff. Sure. Well, did she ever talk to you about what her favorite movie was, either that she was in or that she saw? Did Was that ever something that she talked about? I believe, and I, I hate for you to write this because I might be wrong, but I think it's Experiment Perilous because it was a, it was not just a pretty, wait, not Experiment Perilous, sorry, not that one. Um, oh, God. It's one where she played an older woman, so she wasn't like this, she aged in it, so it was more of good acting rather than Hollywood. Mine, and, and here's a cute story, that the f- first one we ever saw, we were children, and we were like, why are people bugging us on the street all the time? Why are people running after you and calling your name? And we didn't get it, you know. She was in movies and people went nuts for that. So she decided, well, she has to take us to a movie so we'll understand what she does. So she took us to the studio and showed a movie called Princess and the Bellboy. It's like a fairy tale. She's a princess and, I don't know, probably falls in love with the bellboy or whatever. And she, <laughs> pretends, she pretends like she's not a princess, and then there's a raid, and they get all busted, and they she, she ends up in jail because they don't know she's a princess. And we went hysterical crying because we thought our mommy was in jail. So she had to take us out on the steps and take us out of the little movie theater at the studio and tell us it's all fake. The bars were fake. They weren't real. So it was a cute little thing. She's trying to find a movie that's appropriate for her children, and we got all upset. Cause, so that, that's, that's uh, a great the first, story. The first movie I saw, which is she oh. thought was the most innocent one of all. I was wondering if you have any of the pieces of art that your mom created during her lifetime, any of her paintings? I do have some. Wow. Um, there, I have some paintings that are totally abstract, totally abstract. And then I have some sketches that I have up, a couple of little sketches that are, you know, almost, maybe that's why I like yours, that, Reminds me of the sketches I have up of hers. Oh, well, thank you. That must be such a treasure to you to have those. Um, this is a great segue into some of your artwork. And I want to know what um, some of the inspiration is behind your own paintings. Well, I just like to look at things that are beautiful and things, you know, people are like, you should paint this person, you should paint that person. I'm like, well, I have to like them. You know, they have to <laughs> resonate with me. I can't just paint. What? Okay, like, for instance, I just painted Ludwig von Beethoven, and it's under rock stars. It says LVB, the original rock star. And I believe the connection for me, all, first of all, he looks like a rock star with his long hair and everything. And back then, they were the rock stars. But I believe, well, he was born in Germany, but he lived in, in Austria. And I think he, his grave is in this beautiful cemetery that's in front of Karlskirche in Vienna, where Mom was had her huge wedding. I love color, that's for sure. Love color. Um, yeah. And I love to look at things that look pretty to me. I just like you know, it's not very original, but that's what I like. I yeah. love music, rock music. I I played the guitar for a while, so I think the era I grew up in, the 50s, 60s, 70s, you know, a lot of great music was happening. I'm a Beatles fanatic, and, you know, you can look at my Rockstars page and see who I like. Can you tell me your website address? It's Denise Loader DeLuca, wait, www.deniseloaderdeluca.com, right? Sorry. Yeah, it's just my name. Just your name, and um, and you can look at all of your artwork there. Yes. And, and then what if um, people want to find out more information about Hetty? Would you say that the Bombshell movie is the best place to find out more info about her? Or is there um, another place that you think is a really good resource? 
Well, I I think that the movie is excellent, and that's what um during National History <coughs> Month I had a lot of young women, young girls, students writing reports on Mom, which was wonderful, and I told them all to watch it because it's you know in two hours you get the whole story. Richard Rhodes wrote a really good book on her, and he's a Pulitzer Prize winner, so that's a good source. Oh, great! Okay, I'll have to check that out. I know, I know that um, I heard about your mother when I was growing up from my mother, and then watching the documentary about your mother, Bombshell, I felt so inspired. She really is. She was a trailblazer, and she is a huge inspiration for for any person, let alone just any woman, but any person can really be inspired by your mom. So, um, Well, you know, I, hearing that and feeling that, it just breaks my heart because she didn't really, I wish she would have been able to see that she was appreciated because it just, you know, barely scratched before she died, you know. So it's yeah. wonderful and it's inspirational, but it's really heartbreaking. It's a sad story. At the end of that movie... It was hard for me not to cry every time, and then I had to go up and do Q and A's at the film festival. That was kind of hard, and you know, and it's funny every time I watched it, I, who you would think knows everything, learned new stuff each time. So she is an incredible, did incredible research on it. Or, um, well, there um, is that element. And she ends it with the Vienna Symphony playing, and then they go into outer space, and then they say. She never made a penny, and it would be worth so many millions and billions today. And it's like, oh, my God. You know, it's I freaking know. dramatic. <laughs> uh. Very, <laughs> very. but I will say, for watching it and, and the sad feeling I felt, the prevailing feeling, yeah. uh, you know, as just an outsider, was really inspiration because, what a, you know, what a woman she was, what a person she was, so... Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to be real objective because you know we live such a difficult life. My brother yeah. and I are growing up that way, but being objective, it's. It, I agree. It's just amazing, amazing woman. Yes, yes, and um, so I thank you for your time, and you really gave me some fabulous information, and um, it was wonderful speaking with you. Okay, thanks a lot, Juliet.